Today we're going to be looking at what is one of my favorite RPs, and that is uh, the Firebending Monk. I would call him Zuko, but I don't know if I'm allowed to, so I'm going to call him the Blue Spirit. That is what he goes by when he's wearing his Blue Spirit mask in Avatar The Last Air Airbender. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Zuko, one of the best villain uh, story arcs that you'll see in any anime anywhere. Fantastic character. We're going to be RPing as him today with a monk build this is truly a hybrid build someone known for dual wielding and also known for shooting flames from his fists and it works out that way in the game and this is a build that is going to hit hard physically at times and other times it's not going to be the best in melee and it's also going to be a build that hits hard with magic but at times is also not going to be the best magic user and i think that's sort of the you know the best and worst of a hybrid so let's get started let's take a look at zuko and uh we'll start off in the character creator here in the character creator we're looking at mr cotton candy beard here don't worry we're gonna hop over to zuko in a second but as far as creating your initial character you have the choice of any race of course but if we are going to rp uh zuko i think it probably makes the most sense to be a a full-size character and humanoid uh so i mean technically you could be a halfling but it doesn't quite fit that Zuko build. Technically, you could be a half-orc, and you can use this build, but it doesn't quite fit the RP goal. So if you're really trying to do the RP goals here, you're probably going to want to stick with human, or half-elf, or elf, something along those lines. If you're just looking to use the fire monk build, go for it. Pick a dwarf fire monk. Who cares? Go for it. Class, we're going to pick monk, of course. That's where we're going to be for the first couple levels here. And then as far as the background goes, not 100% sure what the best background would be for Zuko. I think the obvious one is Noble. But I, I, I think maybe something along the lines of like Charlatan or Outlander could also kind of fit. He's, this is somebody who's been, uh, who's been banished from his home country. Uh, maybe, maybe it makes sense to have him be somebody that's more in the shadows. Maybe even a criminal because he is sort of a bad guy for the majority um, of that series but i'll stick with noble just so that i don't have to think too too much about the rp aspects of it i don't have to tie myself in knots so we'll move on to the abilities in the ability section this is a build that is going to forego uh intelligence and charisma this is not a fantastic face build if you want to make it be the face of your party uh, you certainly can you could probably do something along those lines and make it a little bit more of a face character but I'm going to really stack into the into the kind of fighting aspect of things here at the top and leave more of the mental capacity things at the bottom. I think in the series, Zuko um, doesn't show the best intelligence or wisdom, but just for the fact that this is a monk and we do need wisdom to land our monk abilities, I am going to give him wisdom. This will be the end of the series, Zuko, who has been enlightened. He's not a charismatic guy. He does not want to talk to anybody. He's never really a tactically sound person, so we'll take the intelligence down. He's a fairly con he has a fairly good constitution. He's lean, but he, he could take a hit. He's very dexterous, often seen dual wielding and tripping people up um, very quick and stealthy. And then he is moderately strong. You don't want to get pushed around too much. So we will allow Zuko to have fairly good strength. As far as skill proficiencies go, uh, we're going to get three of them. I think it probably makes sense to go with acrobatics because he is extremely acrobatic in the show. I also think that it probably makes sense to go with stealth. There's multiple scenes where he is seen sneaking in and out of establishments. Um, and then where you go from there is really up to you. I think survival fits a lot. This is somebody who spends a lot of time alone, living off of the land, um, doesn't necessarily have a home. Survival makes a lot of sense. Um, as far as other things go, nature would probably make sense for the same reason. Investigation might make sense because he's constantly searching for Aang. And maybe it makes sense that it's only a plus one because he oftentimes does not find Aang. You can make it sleight of hand if you want to lean into the sort of rogue build aspect of it uh, but i'm probably just going to go with survival i think that makes the most sense from an rp standpoint so let's hop over to the actual zuko now and we'll take him from level 2 to 12. all right getting to level 2 with our monk we have a much more zuko-ish looking guy here he's more like goth zuko but you know i'm not a character creator and this game doesn't allow you to sculpt faces thank god because then people would give me a lot of crap 
If you can design a better Zuko, let me know. Let me know what to pick, and please, God. But mostly, I just like this tattoo. There's no burn marks over the eye, but I think this really fits the vibe of Zuko. Clearly, damn, something wrong with this eye, a focal point of his character. Monk level two, we're gonna get um, we're gonna get additional key points. I believe that makes it three at this point. And then we're also going to get unarmored movement if you're willing to not wear armor. Of course, the choice is always yours, but if you're willing to not wear armor, you get extra th an extra three meters of movement. We also get all of our um, monk specific actions. We get patient defense, which gives us much better defense, which might be useful since this is uh, not the most bulky character with, with low armor and moderate con. We have step of the wind dash to help us move around quicker and step of the wind disengage to get out of trouble. So we'll go from there and we'll take it on to monk level three. This is gonna get us access to subclasses where we have monk of the four elements. We have the way of the open hand and the way of the shadows. I think the only way to really go here is the way of the four elements. It's it's almost like it's tailored around, uh, it's, it's tailored around the avatar builds. It is very much the avatar style build. We're only going to take fire aspects from it, but this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a monk that has equal abilities to punch and to flame. Uh, I will have later builds with people from avatar like um, Azula, who will probably be a shadow monk, and maybe even the avatar himself, who will probably be a way of the open hand monk, but we'll have to wait until I get around to making those ones. By picking the way of the four elements, we're going to get some spells, and we're also going to get Harmony of Fire and Water. This is a pretty crucial ability, especially for this build, uh, because key points are at a premium. So while you're not in combat, you can regain half your key points rounded down. As far as spells go, I think there's some obvious ones. I think Burning Hands is the first, like, I mean, it's, it's technically called Sweeping Cinder Strike, but it's Burning Hands. It is, like, the quintessential firebender move it is you're shooting flames out of your hands it's a great early game move and it makes a lot of sense from an rp standpoint i think the second one i'll probably pick is the fangs of the fire snake this is not only what i would personally think is probably like one of the best ones but also fits the rp really well we're going to shoot somebody in the face with a flame and then afterwards your next melee attack deals an extra one to four fire damage that pairs really well with flurry of blows or your next attack in general um, and then it, there's there's kind of a, a few more options here. None of them fit perfectly. Obviously, we're not going to pick any of the ice ones. Um, you could technically pick Touch of the Storm because he does deal with lightning and his family deals with lightning. But it's kind of a lackluster move. Thunder Wave, same thing. He does deal with lightning, but there's not really any point in time where Zuko in Avatar blasts anybody off a cliff. So what I'm going to do is pick Fist of Unbroken Air. Um, I think this could be RP'd as... Anytime that there's such a powerful move, it literally knocks somebody back. I think it's a fantastic kind of example of um, of a monk and pure power. That Zuko, and Zuko is a power guy. He's knocking people around. Our next level is where we are, we are going to take a break away from monk, and we're actually going to go into ranger. So you might be saying, but but we're only two levels away from extra attack, and this actually is going to be a build that never experiences extra attack we will however have other options that you'll see as we move forward with our first level of ranger we're going to get a couple of options if you really want heavy armor proficiency you can get it but i'm probably going to leave this unarmored you can pick bounty hunter which will allow you to use ensnaring strike much better you can choose you can get arcana proficiency from either one of these two or you can get sacred flame sacred flame actually probably makes a lot of sense from an rp standpoint but from a purely usefulness standpoint, I'm going to pick Bounty Hunter. And Snaring Strike will be very useful. And Zuko is a skilled warrior. The idea of him ensnaring somebody is not out of this world. As far as na Natural Explorer goes, we never really see him with any animals or companions in the show. Urban Tracker does probably make a lot of sense for his more roguish style. But I think the obvious choice here is Wasteland, Wanderer, Fire. Getting resistance to fire just fits it just makes so much sense here. So we're going to go ahead and take that. He's a firebender. He's resistant to fire. And we do get an extra um, skill proficiency. Spend it where you like. I'll just toss it in a stealth. It fits his character. And uh, we will go from there. We've got three more levels in Ranger. 
At level 2, we're going to get some spells, which is nice. We're also going to get a fighting style, which is kind of key, actually, to this build. As for spells, we're definitely going to take Ensnaring Strike because uh, we have that advantage. Well, enemies have disadvantage against it. And I think Hunter's Mark is not only one of the best options for Ranger, it also makes sense because he spends most of his time going around and hunting the Avatar. It makes a lot of sense that he would be marking his prey. As far as fighting styles go, he's often seen, especially as the Blue Spirit dual wielding. So we are going to grab two weapon fighting. And that way we get that, um, when you make an attack with your offhand weapon, you can add your ability modifier to the damage. That way we're getting really high quality dual wielding. We'll move on to our next level of Ranger. At Ranger level three, we get to choose our subclass. Now we never see, uh, we never see Zuko with any animal companions, although I suppose he does ride one of those big beast lizard things and he is a hunter of sorts, so those could possibly make sense. But I think Gloomstalker makes the most sense. He is a very stealthy character. This will allow him the Dread amb Ambusher High to hide with a bonus action. He'll also be able to become invisible when obscured. It also gives him Dark Vision, which is sorely uh, needed if you do go with the human variant. I Here you can see I went with the High Elf variant because he comes from royalty and High Elves are very royal. And you do get Dread Ambusher, which will help. Not having extra attack, Dread Ambusher will be fairly key. And Disguise Self just fits into that sneaky, roguish style. We do also get to prepare a spell. And the good thing is that we are a Wisdom character, and Rangers are off of Wisdom. So additional spells never help hurt. Uh, I would probably grab an RP, uh, something to help out here. I'll just grab Long Starter just because it's never bad to move more. And we'll move on to... The fourth and final level of Ranger. <clears throat> For our fourth level of Ranger, we have the option to replace a spell, which we are not going to do, but we are going to grab the Dual Wielder Feet. We get plus one bonus to armor class when dual wielding, which is awesome. It's basically half a shield. If you think about it that way, it's actually quite nice. And then, of course, we get to use dual wielding weapons, which is awesome. Who doesn't like going around and double attacking people it's sick and that's going to be the last level of ranger because next level we're going to take maybe a turn that uh from an rp standpoint doesn't make the most sense um to some people but let me let me explain it to you it makes sense we are going to hop into cleric now as far as cantrips go i think thaumaturgy makes sense because bone uh buffing intimidation i think is is pretty on point and then from there, I think Produce Flame makes a ton of sense. And Sacred Flame makes a ton of sense. It makes a ton of sense as far as sticking to the RP that is Zuko. Now, as far as subclass goes, I think there's really only one option. We have to pick the Light Domain. And this is what's going to allow him to uh, stay alive a little bit better in the short term. And in the long term, be a little bit more of a force with those fire spells. It gives us light as a cantrip, which is fairly useless. It gives us burning hands, which we already know, but we can use this with a spell slot instead of a key point. So we can start to kind of ration our key points versus spell slots. Also gives us fairy fire, which is great for gaining advantage and also has the word fire in it. So it fits the vibe a ton. Most importantly, it gives us warding flare as a reaction, which is just tremendous. Allows us to make enemies re-roll every single turn. We can make an enemy re-roll their attack on us. Uh, which is just fantastic. As far as deities go, I don't know if there's one. I have, I'm going to be honest. I haven't put like a ton of thought into the deity. Go ahead and pick whichever one you think fits him the most. Tempest, War, and Soldiers with a little flame on the logo probably makes a lot of sense. Moradin, the God of Smiths, but it does say Dwarf, and it probably doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm going to go with Tempest. It, that, that, if that's not the most fitting RP picture for here, I don't know what is. As far as actual spells go, this is where it gets a little bit uh, kind of off of the RP if you don't pick specifically. Bless definitely doesn't make any sense for Zuko. Command does, however. He's very bossy. Makes a lot of sense. Bane, you're going to knock people. You're going to negatively affect people on the battlefield. That's very fitting. I think Shield of Faith makes a lot of sense. This is a person who is not traditionally faithful in the paladin sense but is definitely driven by sort of sort of bound and driven by 
his initiative, his goal, it sort of drives him. And then uh, from there, I think inflict wounds probably makes the most sense. This is somebody who is, you know, out to kill. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Even though it's not a fire move, this is somebody who will wound you. <laughs> and so we'll move to Cleric 2, and we are going to take Cleric all the way out. So depending on what we get, I will uh, speed it up a little bit. Turn on Dead's not bad, and Extra Channel Divinity is also not bad. Uh, have the option to change your deity if you're not happy with it. We also get Radiance of Dawn, which is an epic move. This is an AoE move that we can use with our Channel Divinity, and I think also makes a lot of sense. There are a lot of moments in the RP where Zuko sort of is knocked down and bursts with anger with it and, and, and sort of there's sort of unleashes an AOA around himself and, and impacting everyone around him. I think that can sort of be RP'd with the Radiance of Dawn. It's not necessary necessarily a Radiance of Brilliance as much as it is a Radiance of Malice, but it doesn't say a nice Radiance. It just says a Radiance. <laughs> As far as adding another spell, um, I suppose you could pick Cure Wounds. This is somebody who um, who is trained as, as a military member, probably knows how to field dress wounds. You could also pick Sanctuary. This is somebody who, like I said, spends a lot of time alone and, and definitely knows how to weave his way in and out of battle. And we'll move our way on to Cleric Level 3, continuing to work that... Um, that RP, we're going to get some new spells, but perhaps more importantly, we get some great light domain spells. We get Flaming Spear, which is a spear. Flaming Sphere, which is a summon, which is absolutely fantastic. And Scorching Ray, 6d6 fire damage whenever we want. Fits the RP. Target multiple people. It's awesome. And then as far as prepared spells go, if you're not loving the RP of any of the ones that you have in there, you can grab Hold Person. This is somebody who's literally trying to lock somebody up in prison. Hold Person makes a lot of sense. You could also pick something like Blindness. <clears throat> not necessarily um, a spell that you see somebody cast, but the idea of tossing dirt in the eyes or, or using some sort of advantage to blind the enemy is not out of scope of this RP at all. You could also pick protection from poison if you wanted to rp him as somebody who's you know aware of his surroundings um and can avoid poison and, and sort of preps his day with an antitoxin that could also make sense calm emotions is also a very good rp although not the most useful spell this is somebody who constantly deals with emotional outbursts so i think a calm emotions as a spell would make a lot of sense as he sort of regathering himself so we'll move on to the last two levels of Cleric here, where we will get our fourth level of Cleric, which means another feat. Now this is sort of an interesting one. As far as the cantrip goes, we're probably just going to pick whatever you want. Same thing goes for spells. I've laid out a couple options already, but as far as the feat, this is a very interesting one. The simple option here is probably take the ability score improvement. This is our last feat, so this is our only way to get up to 18. However, if you know the game, and you know that you can get up to 18 with the mirror at in Act 3. Maybe you feel that you can get by with 16 dexterity. And then you can start to dip into the feats and, and kind of RP something else. You could always you could always magic initiate one of these things like Sorcerer and grab an additional cantrip and spell that might fit. But I think that we've really worked through a lot of the spells. I don't think that there's a lot of spells that really help at this point. So I think what makes the most sense probably for me... Uh, where the heck is it? Where the heck is it? You could pick something like Spell Sniper, which is going to increase his critical hit chance. This is a very pre precise fighter. And then uh, the last one is going to be the Spell Person. I don't know where it is. Elemental Adept. <laughs> Sorry. What, what, what might make the most sense, um, and I haven't tested this exclusively with Monk stuff. I've, I've played with Elemental Adept before, but I haven't a ton with, I haven't played a ton of Monk because it's not maybe the most beginner-friendly class. I don't think it stands out as much, so I haven't played a ton of Monk. So I haven't tested this with the Monk abilities, but I'm assuming it will work with the Monk abilities. If you take Elemental Fire Adept, spells that, ca that you cast ignore resistance to fire, which is fantastic because we have only fire spells thanks to our RP. In addition, when you deal fire damage, you cannot roll a 1, which is awesome because things like fireball and 
uh, Ray of Fire and Scorching Ray, etc., etc., are going to really benefit from that. It makes Fireball, and instead of the baseline for Fireball being 8, the baseline is 16, I think is what it is. Now, moving on to our last level. Once again, a chance to change our deity. and uh, But perhaps most importantly, we get this auto spell here. 8d6 fire damage or fireball automatically added to our spell list, which is absolutely fantastic. I love it from an RP standpoint. It's also a fantastic spell. And with um, Elemental Adept, this will be 16 to 48 damage as opposed to 8 to 48 damage. So the base... The baseline is brought up quite a bit. We also will get Destroy Undead, which is just a nice little perk. If there's ever an undead around you, you can just kind of zap them. <laughs> and they're turned and they get damage done to them, which is fantastic. And we also get access to third level spells. Now, the only ones that really fit here, in my opinion, I think are probably these two in the middle. Glyph of Warden can be used with any um, sort of spell Damage type has a lot of different damage types that can be used. It does include fire, so you can use it as fire. But I also like the RP of Zuko being, like I said, somebody who's tracking and hunting and planning and trapping. And the idea of him laying down a trap that puts people to sleep or the idea of him laying down a spike trap is not out of this realm of possibility. So I think it makes a lot of sense for Glyph of Warding to be added as well as the fireball that we automatically get from this level. And then also, I don't hate spirit guardians as well just because if you watched the show the avatar you know that there's a lot of people that are sort of haunting and helping zuko his uncle iroh is always there literally literally as a guardian in his life i don't hate the idea of him summoning the literal spirit of his uncle iroh to help him in his battles dealing radiant damage around him or necrotic damage if you have a more sinister outcome and then also I don't hate the idea of him having these haunting spirits, his father who banished him, all these negative things that, that are working in his life. Maybe the spirit guardians are, are necrotic damage and they're more of a negative force around him. Maybe he can't control it, but it comes out uh, every once in a while in the form of spirit guardians. So I don't hate spirit guardians being added either. So I, will, I, I, I think that probably fits the RP. Otherwise, maybe bestow curse fits, but uh, other than that, I don't think most of these really fit the RP. Let's hop into a battle and see how it all blends together. All right, there's our boy, the blue spirit. Ready to go. Uh, I just gave him a couple items that I think are fitting. This is by no means a super optimized build. The whole point of RPing this is not to really make a final build, but to kind of make a full game RP through the whole game build. So showing just a final build, just an assortment of weapons that kind of make sense and or look cool. And I'll start with the weapons for that reason. This is the Salty Scimitar. It's not very good, but it looks cool as hell. <laughs> and then the Knife of the Undermountain King is very good. It knocks your uh, critical hit down by one, which is spectacular and gives you an advantage on lightly obscured foes, which I think fits for somebody who's considered fairly sneaky. I gave him this ring, the Fetish of Kalar de Ria. The ring that gives him invisibility. And then for a helmet, he has the Mask of Soul Perception, which is just a plus two bonus to attack rolls initiative and perception which is you know fantastic fantastic helmet plus two attack rolls is awesome give him the cloak of protection just for a little buff to protection plus pretty cool i think the most fitting two are probably these last two the hell dusk armor not only is it a very good armor you're automatically proficient in it when you put it on um, but when you succeed in a saving throw the caster receives burning for three turns so by using your dexterity um i think we have plus two <clears throat> So by using your moderately good dexterity of 16, if you dodge a spell, you're going to inflict burning on the person who passed it, which is awesome. And you have resistance to fire damage and cannot be burned, which is also awesome, although we already have resistance to fire damage. But not being able to be burned and taking three less damage from all sources is fantastic. And then lastly, the Hell Dust Gloves. 1d6 damage of fire to all of our weapon attacks. Um... And our unarmed attacks deal 1d6 necrotic damage, which is awesome. Literally punching the life out of people. And it also gives you rays of fire, which is right here. I just went through. I have kind of all of our monk abilities. I have all the fire abilities. And then a little bonus rays of fire here. So let's start some ruckus and uh, we'll see what we can do. He's too close for me to get advantage on. Let's kill this guy. Benji was annoying. Oh, wow. <laughs> Actually, take quite a bit. And it is just me, so we'll see how things bear. 
The good news is uh, you have a lot of versatility with this class. I, you normally wouldn't have fly, but from very early on, you're going to have something like um, Step of the Wind Dash. So normally what would be very far, I can get all the way over here. And go ahead and whap Benji, knock him out, <laughs> or kill him. And even though we don't have an extra attack like, I, like you saw there, we do get that Dread Ambusher. And we're going to be able to punch people, so we are going to have a lot of versatility. And dual wielding, we're going to have that bonus action dual wield option. Let's see if Klaus can, can take us on. And that was actually a very good example of... We, we were saved for that spell, so now Klaus is burning, which is spectacular. Although, I don't, can't say I know a lot about the burning effect. Just 1d4. Not amazing, but very, very thematic. And then the best thing about... Uh, about this class is it's just the versatility. So I can go ahead and I can just I could dual wield right now and strike him with both weapons, or I can strike him with the first, and then I can go in and punch him. And we're getting increased damage from the one d six per punch from those gloves. He's still burning <laughs> and pushing, and then he's gonna try and get on the run here, and we can go in and just cleric fireball. See ya. <laughs> So this is a class that, if you, the way that I'm looking at it is, I think I mentioned it before, it is right down the middle hybrid. You are not going to have extra attack, but as you can see here, 10 to 30 damage from your flurry of blows. Also, you get your offhand attack right here. You've got Rays of Fire that's for free and is ignoring resistance. Confirmed, our monk abilities do ignore resistance and they get that necrotic bonus. And then when all else fails... You can just go ahead and drop a fireball. And everybody's fine. Well, not them. <laughs> so that's Zuko. Uh, we're going to go deal with these murder charges. If there's anything else that you think I could have fit into this build, let me know. If you like the build, also let me know. And if you have any other inspirations for builds, whether that's from a show, whether that's just from your own brain, let me know. And I will, uh, I'm going to go take out this guard. I'll catch you later.